Can I see the crack cocaine? If it all comes back, that's how you know it's pure. Mm -hmm. Everything came back, so. It's this pure. Way. Oh, so this is like what you show uh, your yeah, clients these are, to be yeah, like. These are Coke is your number one seller. Yeah. By the time the meth, cocaine, or heroin from Mexico reaches a regular dealer in LA, that means it's gone through the cartel's hands and past the drug task forces that specialize in major seizures. Moving forward, street rules apply, which means we're tracking the drugs on our own without the protection of law enforcement. We're on our way to Garden Grove in Orange County where we're going to meet a street dealer and talk about the actual street costs of dealing drugs. My trusty guy today through this world is going to be my friend John. When you were on the streets, what were you dealing? Oh, what wasn't I dealing? I had 10 little fingers and 10 little things, you know? Whatever anybody wanted, I yeah. could get it from them. Heroin, meth. Heroin, meth, crack, even pharmaceuticals. If you, if you had that Xanax craze, you know? I got you, don't trip. How many times total have you been in and out of prison? I have six prison terms under my belt. For the most part, the prison system these days are filled with drug users and drug dealers. You know, right. Which I think is bullshit because even in complete social economical collapse, the two things that will continue to sell is drugs and pussy. Sad to say we're not living in a real democracy. We're not living in a place where people from the bottom have a real opportunity to make it to the top. The majority of the people, we just want to survive. We got to eat. Everybody's got to eat. You know, the education system doesn't teach us how to grow our own food. They teach us how to regurgitate information in history, but history is only written by the winners. You know, I think it's time for the 99% to be the winners now. That's my understanding of things. So, what are we about to go do now? We're gonna go meet people who um, break man's law in order to fucking fulfill natural law. So we're about to meet up with a street dealer from John's past, whose main source of income is selling drugs. What kind of drugs do you sell? Mainly coke. How long have you been dealing? Since I was eight. Since you were eight? Are there street politics? Certain gangs, they run a certain area. You know, in that gang, you know, try to tax you. Mm-hmm. Are you in a gang? Yes. Born in it. Which one? But. In my arm and shit like that. Wow. Have you ever shot someone? I've been arrested for it, so no. They found me guilty. I saw with a firearm and I sent murder. Right. I did time in the hole and it was just standing there wrapping it. I heard myself and everybody around. Some people sell drugs to support their, another habit they have. Or sell drugs to support their drug habit. I've seen that a lot. Why do you sell drugs? Support my family. Pay bills. Live good. A little bit. Mm. But everybody can't get a job. I tried six months. Every day. And they hired me at Krispy Kreme. How did that go? Like, you didn't like it. You don't like Krispy Kreme donuts? They don't pay enough. But. No. So first check, I looked up. Uh, didn't even catch it. I was so mad at it. How much was it? Probably like three fifty. Three hundred fifty dollars for a week. How much do you make now? Probably a couple hundred thousand. A couple hundred thousand. Fast money. It's not easy, but it's fast. Right after our chat, we got a close look at his main product. That's a lot of Coke. This is five ounces of Coke. These are grams, seventy dollars a gram. Seventy dollars a gram for the crack cocaine. And these are equally popular as the powder these days? Your your older crowd does the crack. I've never seen crack cocaine before. Just the form is different. Yeah, you can roll it with weed or antenna on the car. 
That's wow. like 40, 50 bucks right there. 40, 50 bucks. Yeah. How do you test them? It snaps, it doesn't crumble. It crumbles it's, up, that means you got a little baking soda in it. You like that crack, that clean crack? Yeah, you got a big nice snap. Wow. Where did you get this from? I know a couple of Mexican guys down the street. <laughs> Your friendly neighbors? Yeah, friendly neighbors. How long will it take you, you think, to sell those five ounces? I can give four or five people one ounce a piece. They pay me in two days. So John, we just met one of your friends from your old life. What is your life like now? My life right now is completely different than it was back then. Um, right now I'm a chef at a restaurant in West LA. Um, I found my passion in cooking and art. You know, rather than running the streets, running amok. It was like a long, a long journey to get to where I'm at now, but I'm, I'm happy I survived. Although I still hold on to some of the tenets that I, uh, I grew up with. Honor, loyalty, respect, you know. I learned all that through living a criminal life. You know, it's been three years and um, I think I've made more forward progress in these past three years than I have in the decade prior to. Although I don't get the same adrenaline rush that I had back then, it still brings me a certain peace, you know? And I, I find that peace is more worthwhile than the adrenaline rush. There are times where I still miss that adrenaline rush though. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing quite like, you know, feeling your heart rate just increase at that, at that chance you might die. Where there's a will, there's a way, and there are few wills stronger than the drive for money or the drive for drugs. The dealer from today is considered small time, and he still makes a lot of money because so many people are buying drugs. It's basic economics, supply and demand. Coming up, we'll see the demand side and the final stage where drugs end up with everyday Americans.